Yeah. Right. What puts a lot of people off the GED is the section where you're not allowed to use a calculator because people don't know their multiplication tables or they don't know all the multiplication tables. And they get a little bit worried saying, how am I going to do the GED when I get to the section without multiplication tables? What if you could take the multiplication tables in with you? Well, you can't, because they won't let you take a piece of paper with the multiplication tables written out. But suppose you could very quickly, in under a minute, write out your multiplication tables from 10, 1 to 10. And that can happen if you do this in my patented math doctor method. If you do it in another way, it may take you 5, 10, 15 minutes, which isn't a good use of your time. But if you can write them out very, very quickly, they will be to your advantage. Once you've got your multiplication tables down, several things will happen. One, you can do all the multiplication questions. You can do all the division questions. You can do fraction questions, putting things in lowest terms. And probably most importantly, you'll be able to relax because you'll be able to say, Okay, I got the stuff, now I can get on with the GED. So that's why this is very important. So we're going to have a quick demonstration with Brittany, one of our students. And Brittany's going to give me the math doctor race in how to, uh, to write out your multiplication tables. We'll see how she writes them out, we'll see how I write them out, and I'll show you my patented method, I'll share it with you, and you'll be able to write them out in under a minute, and the GED will be nothing. It'll be solved. That problem will be solved for you. Okay, so Brittany's going to come up here. We're going to have a little race and uh, see who can write the 1 to 10 times tables the fastest. Okay, are you ready? I'm Go. ready. Right, the key to this is speed. Now, somebody pointed out that my grid here looks like a load of chicken scratch, and it does. But I can read it. It's for my own personal use. We aren't having an art class here. We aren't having a class in aesthetics here. We are just trying to write down a multiplication facts as fast as we can. That is a useful tool to me, and that's all that counts. All right. The way we do this, quickly, is to start with our ones. Now, we're going to rewrite laws of physics here. In the math grid, what goes across must go down. Physics always says what goes up must go down, but we'll rewrite those laws and say what goes across must go down. Now we're going to go to do the tens. So we started with the ones. We're going to do the tens now. And you can see even when I take my time, my handwriting is still horrible. So that wasn't an excuse because I was going so fast. It's just horrible. What goes up and down goes across. Now, I've done the ones, I've done the tens. 
I always tell people, the way to remember this is to think you're building a house. You build the walls, the floor, and a roof. You get that in place, the rest falls in place very quickly. Okay? We're going to celebrate now because we've got the shell of our house built. We're going to be moving in soon. We're very happy. So we're going to send up some fireworks. I always ask, what is the ultimate hardest multiplication table to do? And everybody says the nine times table. And I say the nine times table is easiest. We're going to send up a rocket for our fireworks to celebrate. So we have to have a countdown. So what we do is nine. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And we go back up. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. There's the nines done. Now we don't have to refigure them out or recalculate them. All we do is copy this list this way. Because what goes up goes across. And they're done. And I always say to everyone, have you done anything hard yet? And they say no. And I say you won't do anything hard. You counted to tens, you counted by tens, and you counted backwards from nine. Not very difficult. We've got our house, we've sent up our rocket, we're going to put the windows in now. The windows are fives. Five, ten. Why do I do the windows next or the fives next? Two reasons. One, it's very easy to do. Everyone can count by fives. You learn that very easy early on when you're uh, counting nickels and uh, counting uh, in grade one, that sort of thing. So everyone can count by fives. The other reason we put them in there is they act as a spacer. If you start miscalculating and you suddenly get to ten and you've put a ten there, you know you've done something wrong. So the spacer is, is why they're there. So we did one, tens, nines, fives. The rest are now done in the order that you see them that are left. So we're going to do the two, three, four, six, seven, eight. Always remembering what goes across goes down. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. Have we done anything hard yet? No. There's the threes done. Have we done anything hard? Not really. And what I always tell everybody is, once you've got the fours done, there's only nine boxes to finish. And everybody thinks about, yeah, there's only nine boxes. And these ones are the ones that everyone has difficulty with. You're seven times sevens, eight times seven, those sorts of things. But they are actually quite easy. We've got 30, we're adding six, 36. 36 and six, 42. And then I always tell everybody, don't say 42 plus six, say 46 plus two, 47, 48. Put a 42 there and a 48 there because what goes across must go down. Suddenly we've only got four boxes left to go. And I always tell everyone to remember the last four numbers. You can remember phone numbers, birthdays, unless you're a guy and you forget all those things like anniversaries. But most people can remember four numbers and two of them happen to be the same. All right, 49, 56 goes there, 56 goes there. And if you're old enough, a lot older than I am, and you remember the Beatles, they say, well, you still love me when I'm 64, and that's the last one. 64, if you've done it right, will come in three from the side and three from the top, or from the bottom. With our multiplication tables, now we can find what is six times five. Six, five, join them up, we get 30. We can do division. What is 42 divided by 6? We find 42, we find 6, oh, it's 7. We can also do lowest terms. If you've got a fraction and it's 8 
sixteenths. What is that in lowest terms? Just move across to here. It's a half. One over two. If you have another fraction, 36 over 5, 45, what's that in lowest terms? Move straight across, it's 4 fifths. You can do all kinds of little tricks using the uh, multiplication square that's not necessarily math. Or not necessarily multiplication. It can be division and it can be fractions as well. Chris is falling asleep. I'm sure the audience is falling asleep. So I'm going to stop now. Thank you.